Happy Friday. This is my first video of the spring semester, so I want to welcome our new students to Montgomery College and encourage you all to get connected. While it may take a bit more effort to find your home here, particularly in the midst of a pandemic, please reach out and get engaged. I promise it will benefit you so much. The college has so many resources that can make your experience richer, whether it be the Student Health and Wellness Center, our libraries, our tutoring services, and so many specialized academic programs that can really add value to your experience here. Now, one of our special programs is my dialogue series, and I had a terrific conversation with Dr. Travis Gales, our county health officer, just yesterday. In addition to his understanding of health disparities in the county, he shed some pretty important light on the distribution of the COVID-19 vaccines in Montgomery County, which I know that we're all very interested in. Now, as you may have heard, the county's ability to distribute the vaccine is dependent on several factors, but the primary one is on our supply that we get from the state. At our board meeting just this past week, I heard that the county is currently receiving about 10,000 doses a day. Now, with more than a million people living in Montgomery County, uh, it's going to take roughly five to six months to vaccinate everyone with two doses. Now, hopefully, President Biden will get the production and distribution rates accelerated. But until then, that's where we are. Uh, Dr. Gales echoed the reality in, in our conversation. But the good news is that Dr. Gales reported that Montgomery County is distributing the vaccine at extremely high levels, 99%. So if you're frustrated, which I know some of us are, please keep in mind that Montgomery County is doing its absolute best, but they can't distribute vaccines that they don't have yet. That's a little bit concept of supply and demand. Now, this is a reality that will inform our planning for the summer and fall. The coronavirus advisory team is currently drafting recommendations to my senior leadership team about when and in what form the college plans to uh, offer courses and increase face-to-face -face classes and services. Stay tuned for more in my weekly communications, but please remember that safety is our highest priority. It's been a long haul in this crisis, but we wanna get everyone through it in good health. And that means that we have to look at the data and make decisions that support all of us, students and employees alike. Now, let me end with some fantastic news. Our nursing program was ranked in the top 25 in the nation for associate degree nursing programs. What an honor that is to have it when we know that nurses are so critically needed right now. The college also won five excellence awards from the Council for the Advancement and Support of Education, CASE, District 2 competition. We were the only community college to receive such recognition, including an honorable mention for best practices in diversity, equity, and inclusion. Fantastic work and congratulations to all of our folks who contribute to those projects. And finally, Amanda Gorman needed to reschedule her planned visit to the college to prepare for her upcoming Super Bowl performance. But her publicist tells us she will reschedule with us in the very near future. I know this has been an exciting development for her. And we know that after her dramatic inaugural performance, there are a lot of people knocking her door. But we're very happy that she'll be at the college in the near future. Now, that's all I have for my corner of the college. Please stay safe, wear your mask, and have a phenomenal weekend. I know I'm looking forward to mine. Take care and be well.